Good morning, good morning, good morning, great morning, extraordinary morning, happy Monday morning to all my friends and family out there. And I'm back in the Kayam studio in beautiful 197 degree Scottsdale, Arizona. I joke, I joke, I kid, I kid, but I'd rather cool down than have to warm up on the East Coast in the winter time. I know we bitch, I know we complain, but I love the heat, it makes my body feel good. If you suffer from any kind of rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune disease, then I highly recommend living in warmer climates. Climates that even might have a little bit of humidity, uh, but we definitely have a dry heat out here in Arizona and Scottsdale. So good morning to all my people out there. I'm talking about the difference and why society why technology and why this day and age has jacked everything up for us because there's such a big difference in our mindset and what we think to be true. And here's, here's the starch truth of it all, guys. There is a big difference between being fit and being healthy. I'm not even gonna get into longevity yet. Fitness and health. Fitness is what we think of when we see athletes competing, bodies shirts taken off, Olympians, competitive fitness, the sport of fitness, bodybuilders, magazine covers, TV shows, Baywatch, The Rock. That's what we think of when we think of fitness. And most of us, probably 99% of society, especially here in America, we wanna be fit, but we have no clue what health really means. And I can tell you right now from years of destroying my body, from taking supplements, from training two and sometimes three times a day, from sleeping in a tent to being in cryotherapy chambers, fitness usually is not healthy. And I'm gonna repeat that. Fitness is usually not healthy. So look, if you're somebody who's like, I need to lose 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, we may need to do some things that are slightly unhealthy, like training and sweating, multiple times throughout the day, on limiting the amount of sugar and carbohydrates that we intake, on completely reducing the inflammation through our body. And although that can have some healthy, um, some, some, some health-related positive things that can happen to you on the health side, most of it is not healthy. Being fit is not necessarily healthy. We take that a step further and we look at longevity. And there's such a big difference now in what people think in terms of being fit, correlating into their health, which sometimes you can have both, and then longevity. I can tell you right now, if you've been lifting heavy weights, if you're a power lifter or you're a bodybuilder, I'm even gonna say this, if you are a competitive crossfitter, you're not gonna live a long life. Ah, I started some shit right there. You're not gonna live at the same rate in terms of longevity that other people might that don't beat their bodies up, that don't pound each and every single day, that aren't consuming large amounts of animal protein or creatine or any kind of amino acid or supplement or thing that has to get filtered through the body. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean for the general public. It means that before I go into any kind of fitness program, before I join a gym, I wanna ask myself, is this place, is this program, is the work that I'm about to do, is it going to serve me in the long run? Okay, great, I wanna lose 10 or 20 pounds. I got my 20 year high school reunion coming up in October. I got about five months to get ready so I can look good, so I can fit into a dress. Ah, we might tend to put longevity on the back burner. We might even put health on the back burner because fitness is more important because we want to fit into that dress. And that's okay. This is why we say, hey, look, you got to cycle your fitness into blocks. Eight, 12, 16 week blocks. You're going to do some heavy training and you're going to start to take creatine or glutamine pre and post workout you're going to be training multiple times throughout the day, you're gonna beat and pound your body up, and we need to do that in cycles, 12, 16 weeks at a time, and then we cycle off of it, or we deload in the strength world, where we'll take a full week off 
of whatever it is we're doing. The same reason why I say, hey guys, it's really important to cycle off of large amounts of animal protein. Go green for at least one full day throughout the week or possibly one meal throughout the day and eliminate or at least limit the amount of red meat and animal protein that you consume throughout the day. There is a reason why vegan and vegetarians tend to live the longest. If we start to study the blue zone, if we look at Tony Robbins research and the Robbins Institute, they taught us, and I highly believe in this, in terms of longevity, the study of centurions, those who are living to be 100 years old or more, they're not lifting weights. They're moving their body, they're doing some body weight exercises, and they're walking. They're walking at a high to moderate speed power walking and they're walking somewhere around the 10 to 20 minutes a day range so take a look at what you're doing right now first of all if you're doing nothing you have no physical exercise and you're like I'm fine I can still sleep in these clothes good morning my brother Alan then hey look keep doing your thing but if you if you have absolutely nothing to lose then take a look at what the big picture looks like. Take a look at what your short, mid, and long-term goals are going to be in this life. Because I can tell you right now, that if you tell me my bicep is gonna grow to 20 inches, and I'm gonna have the biggest biceps in town, but I'm gonna live 11 years less than I possibly would have had I walked or stretched or eaten a salad, then at this point and stage in the game in my life, I'm gonna take the salad and the smaller biceps. I weigh 168, 169, 170 pounds right now. At my biggest, I was about 210 pounds. And that's not too long ago. That's about six or seven years ago. As I was serving to be a competitive crossfitter, a competitive functional fitness athlete. And I needed to be bigger, I needed to be stronger, I needed to be able to put on some size and some muscle. And my nutrition correlated to the way that I was training. Fast forward a couple years, I turn 35, I realize I can't compete or I'm not going to compete with some of the big dogs out there who are also 35. Look, there's some masters, competitors, athletes out there, some CrossFit Games masters athletes, both male and female, that I take my hat off to because of the amount of energy and work and capacity that you have built within yourself. But it's also not going to serve you in the long run. It's not going to serve you in terms of your longevity. So I started to get a little bit healthier. I transitioned from fit to healthy, and what I found out was I actually looked healthier, personally. I looked leaner. I reduced the amount of body fat I had around my stomach and my gut because I stopped doing dairy products. So immediately, I transitioned from fit to healthy just by altering and changing the way I eat. Think about that. If you want to lose 10 pounds, do not look for the closest gym or a personal trainer or a new wave that's going to kick your ass. Start in the kitchen. You cannot out-train a poor diet. You cannot, you cannot out-lift, out-run, out-swim, out-stretch the shit you put inside your body and consume. It cannot happen. Even athletes competing at the highest level, if they start to put shit fuel in their body like donuts and dairy and crap supplements, they're not gonna be able to perform at that high level. So here's your transition from fit to healthy now. Eliminate some of the things that cause inflammation and toxicity in your body. Inflammation, meaning that your cells become inflamed, dehydrated, and they're going to swell up is the number one cause for disease, possibly even cancer, in today's day and age. How do I get inflamed? High stress, poor foods, lack of good sleep from poor foods and stress, reducing the amount of toxicity I put in my body. All these things start to correlate in terms of being fit, and healthy. We take it a little bit deeper now, right? I got fit, great. I started a fitness program that got me in a bikini, awesome. I had to do some things that probably aren't too healthy to get there, that's okay. Now I'm in my health zone. I'm living in this place that I'm comfortable at. I've eliminated dairy, I've eliminated wheat, I've eliminated alcohol from my body so I now have less inflammation floating through me. I'm not as swollen, I'm not as puffy. I feel better. 
which in return makes me happier, which now transitions me into longevity. I go from fit, I go from fat to fit, to healthy, to longevity. There is a huge bridge, there is a huge gap between what we think is healthy and longevity. As we're starting to study people who are living to be 100 years plus. My great aunt Rosella just turned 103 years old. She likes Kentucky Fried Chicken. She doesn't drink alcohol. She doesn't use a microwave. She walks. She assists herself in standing and sitting, which is really ideally what squatting is. She's consistent. She lives by a body of water. She spends time with people that she associates with. Combination of all those things with just a little bit of fitness, with a little bit of mindfulness, with a little bit of nutrition, has now allowed her to live to be 103 years old. I don't know about you, but there is not an exercise training program on the planet that is geared around helping you live to be 100 years old, which is why you need more than just fitness, which is why you need more than just a barbell, why, why it's so important to understand all of these things that we put inside of our body that we do to ourselves. Because I, I can tell you right now, I've done some nasty, nasty workouts. I've done double Murph vested. I've hiked for 32 hours. I've done double Grand Canyon, rim to rim in the hottest days. All those things, I've done Kokoro twice. I've climbed to the top of mountains and volcanoes around this world and I want to continue to climb to the top of these mountains. But those times become extremely unhealthy. When I get back from some of these events and these experiences, I shut it down. I shut down the high caloric intake, the high animal proteins, the high animal fats like butter and ghee and I switch it up for at least one to four weeks so I can start to get my body back to its natural state. Look. If you take supplements, I don't care what it is, from vitamin C to vitamin D to some kind of high-end supplement that's making you money, that shit is not going to help you live a longer life. You must eliminate the toxicity you put in your body. And supplements are man-made products. It's that simple. I don't care if it's organic. It's not natural to your body and to your state. What's another thing we can do to help promote longevity and live a longer life? I've got a downstream of these things. Everything from eliminating the microwave and drinking out of plastic to being just a little bit more mindful, thoughtful, and grateful on a daily basis. The biggest one for me right now and one of the things I'm studying is just being grounded. Grounded to the earth Right now, I'm barefoot, I'm on concrete, but at least it gets me a little bit more connected to the ground. If you have a backyard, you have dirt, soil, grass, if you have asphalt, if you're by a beach, I highly recommend walking, jogging, spending time with your feet deep down into the ground to use some of the electrical, not magnetic, which we once thought the earth was, and yes, there are some magnetic fields, but having the electrical connection to your body will help reset you, which again will put you in a natural rhythmic caridium to get you back to our natural state. So we got to walk around barefoot. We can't always be connected from the rubber soles of our shoes or our feet. If you live in New York or you live in a high rise building and your feet never actually touch the ground, there's a reason why you're so pissed off, you're so mad. It's because you're not connected, you're not using this gigantic place we call Earth to help you get back into the natural rhythms in life. My name is Luke Kayyem. Know the difference between being fit, being healthy, and longevity. I'm going to put a real simple tool I use each and every single day called the eight ways. If you look at today's eight ways, the tool for my development, look at the book that I'm reading about getting grounded, getting connected. It's called earthing. And it's such a simple thing that we can do each and every single day. When I get up in the morning, first thing I do is I start working on my stack, my eight ways to show up. I then read whatever book I'm reading at the time, whatever literature. I then write. 
I journal, I then write down my eight ways, the different things that I show appreciation for throughout the day, one of them being development using my mind, and take a look at it and see the book that I'm reading. It's called Earthing. It's phenomenal. Guys, I appreciate you all for being here. Have a wonderful, magnificent day. Know the difference. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We got to move. You got to find a way to move for multiple reasons, not only to get the mind working, but also to get the heart working. This right here is the most important muscle in the body. And sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes we forget to use it. Bicep curls and deadlifts and power cleans. A lot of that stuff is going to work the entire body. But what we need to work more importantly than anything else than any other muscle in our entire body is that heart right there, guys. It starts with you. My name is Luke Kai. I'm living each and every single day with purpose, passion, and positivity. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you back here tomorrow where I, I'm going to discuss and even walk you guys through a meditation, a mindfulness, and a breathing practice. Peace.